Hey everyone, my name is Charlie, welcome to the channel. In this video we will be painting up a Breacher Boy from the Orc Commando set. I have already painted up most of this unit, but I tried to paint up the remaining ones on camera. Uh, we'll go through some basic techniques like base coating, mixing colors, using washes, contrast paints and highlighting. Getting started. I prefer to paint the model from the inside out. This means to start with areas of the model that are closest to the skin, for example, its skin. Getting the inner portions of the mini done first prevents the paint getting on the hard to reach areas later. So as an example, I will start a paint job on the skin and work my way out and finish on the armor or clothes last. Here I am applying thin layers of Bugman's Glow. It takes about two to three coats to get even coverage. You might be thinking that this is far from being green, but just give it time, we'll get there. Acrylic paints by nature are somewhat transparent, so by painting on this pinkish brown color we establish that there is some blood under the green skin. Once we have the base color down, I'll mix a dark green to it and apply it in thin layers once again, but not covering the whole area, leaving a few spots where the Bogman's glow can still be seen. I paint this over the body and the weapon holding hand. Moving on, I'll be using a red wash to deepen the flesh tone and to define the muscles. A wash is a diluted paint, try to think of it as a filter. It is not as strong that it can cover the base color, it just stains the surface and darkens the cracks and crevices. For example, between the crazy muscles of this orc. I don't want to use this wash with its full strength, so I dilute it with a medium. I just wanted to define the separation between the muscles and not make my orc skin more red. After waiting for about half an hour for the wash to dry, I get my greens ready and start to paint on the first layers. Going from dark to light progressively with quite watered down paint. If your paintbrush has too much paint on it, you might want to dab it on a paper towel. This will soak up the extra moisture that would not otherwise spill over the mini, staining parts that you don't want to affect. So what I tend to do is to mix the brighter with the darker color. I try to think of this as a half step between colors. First dark green on its own, then mixing dark green with medium green, followed by medium green on its own. Then medium green mixed with bright green, finally pure bright green. And with each layer I try to cover less area, only applying the brighter colors on the parts that would be facing the light, let that be the sun, a lamp or any other light source. Once I'm done with the greens, I grab a pale skin color Kisla Flesh and paint it on the veins, knuckles and scars on his hands. Once that's dry, I use the same red wash as before and stain the fleshy parts and leave it to dry. Moving on to the backpack. Using the same technique as I did with the skin, I'm starting from the inside, which means applying a Vallejo dark German brown to the backpack, making it look like it's made of leather. I enjoy using this paint, it has really good coverage, often one layer is enough for full opacity. Once that's done, I move on to paint the attached landmine on the top of the backpack. It gets about two layers of Morgas bone until the primer is fully covered. This is followed by Vallejo Scarlet Red, which gets coated on the similarly safely attached dynamites. The dynamite's fuses are painted with Rockart Flash, a nice sickly skin color. The grenades are base coated with our medium green color Castellan Green. The giant hammer's handle is covered with some sort of leathery stripes. Those get a treatment of Screamer Pink. The hammer's head is coated with Mechanicus Standard Grey, General Grey color. All the leather belts around the backpack are painted with Steel Legion Drab. The belt buckles and other metal parts are painted silver with lead voucher. The handle gets another layer of Screamer Pink. After the base colors were all done, I used Agrax Earthshade, a brown wash, to give definition to the leathery parts. Dragon of Nightshade, a blue wash, was then placed on the weapon's handle. I thought a contrast between pink and blue would look interesting. The washes left behind some unwanted staining, so I applied some of the base colors again 
in this case Rakard flash on the fuses. The leather strips on the weapon handle received another layer of screamer pink. Then I used Mephiston Red to highlight the dynamite. Once that was done, I mixed Screamer Pink and Mephiston Red and painted a small highlight on the leather. Morgus Bone was painted on the flatter stained areas of the landmine, leaving the brown wash in the recesses. After that I used Catechin Flash to highlight the backpack, only leaving the dark brown color in the shadowy areas. Then I've added Steel Legion Drab to the previous color and highlighted the backpack even further, focusing on the edges that would catch more light. Steel Legion Drab was used on its own on the most highest parts of the bag and belts. The grenades got highlighted with the medium and bright green colors, following the same method that I used on the backpack. All the metallic parts got highlighted with Stormhost Silver, bright silver color. These shiny spots really draw the eye when looking at the mini from a distance. The hammer was also quite stained by the brown wash, so I established the flatter parts with some more mechanical standard grey. Once that was done, I've added some white paint to the grey and highlighted the upward facing edges with that color. To finish off the backpack, I added some white to the Morgus bone and highlighted the very edges of the landmine once that was done, I left a few scratches over its surface to imitate dents on the flatter parts. I've decided to give a dark blue jacket to this guy, so I grabbed Inky by Darkness and painted it on with two thin coats. Kind of reminds me of a denim jacket. I've tried my best to not paint over the skin, but accidents will happen. The green mix was still on my palette, so I just corrected it. This was followed by an off-white went on the cloth around his wrist. I tried to keep consistency with my colors, so I've used Steel Legion Drab on the leathers around his upper body, the same way I have used on the backpack. For his pants, I've used the second highlight color of the backpack and applied it all over. This paint has a very nice coverage, so two coats were enough to color it in. German dark brown from Vallejo was applied on the boots. These were my intended metal paints, but in the end I've just used three of them. Dead Belcher, Stormhost Silver and Balthazar Gold. A silicanum grey contrast paint went over the weapon handles and nails. Contrast paint acts similarly to washes, but their opacity is much stronger. Another contrast paint Blood Angel's Red was used for the explosives box. Then I grabbed Drakenhof Nightshade and applied it on the jacket, darkening it down and letting it seep into the recesses creating definition. Once I was finished with it, I let the mini to dry for about 15 to 20 minutes. While that was drying, I've used two other washes on different surfaces, non-oil for all the metallic parts, this dark tone creates a nice separation between plates, rivets and bolts. This was followed by Agrax Urchade, brown wash on the belts, straps, pants and boots. I've used Gulliman Flash Contrast Paint to tint and shade the bronze part. This paint is also excellent if used on skin colors. To achieve a darker metal color on the weapon, I've mixed Lead Belcher with Abaddon Black. This resulted in a deeper steel color, but also provided better opacity for the paint. To break up the steel colors, I used Balthazar Gold on the tank and other bits. For some more variety, that belcher on its own was painted on the end of the weapon. I wanted to have a color that really stands out from dark metallics, and I thought a bright yellow would be quite suitable. But because the primer on the cables was black and my yellow paint has very poor coverage, first I painted these parts white and then applied the Vallejo's golden yellow. To make the weapon a bit more dangerous looking, I've painted on some hazard stripes. Then I've picked out some bolts and spikes with the previous copper color. As a complementary color to the yellow, I've used different reds to paint the engine box on the side of the weapon. 
When the base colors were established, I've added non-oil to the silver parts, seraphim sepia, a sepia wash to the cables, and gullion flash to the bronze bits. I left these paints to dry and painted the little hammer symbol with rock art flash on his left shoulder. By now the washes have dried on the mini, so I returned to highlighting back the leather area using the same method as previously on the backpack. Once that was done, I moved on to tackle the jacket. Incubi darkness was used again on the flatter surfaces, keeping the blue wash in the recesses. This was followed by a mix of Incubi darkness and ultramarines blue. This color was painted only on the top facing surfaces. When that was finished, I mixed techless blue to the previous color and painted it sparingly on the edges that would catch the most light. Following the inside out technique, next thing to highlight were the leather harnesses and belts. For this, I only used the base color Steel Legion Drab. The wristbands were dulled down by the wash, so I painted rock art flash on the highest points. I highlighted the engine box in a patchy way with Mephiston Red to let the previous layers show this would imply wear and tear and rust. To the edges that face upwards, I've painted Troll Slayer Orange. I followed that up with Dorn Yellow that was painted on the electrical symbol. Highlighting the silvers. I heavily diluted lead belcher and painted it on the most upward facing parts, leaving the shading in their cracks and crevices. This technique was used on the body of the Mini and the weapon as well. When I was happy with the result, I used Stormhost Silver on the highest edges, bolts, rivets, even the bronze parts. At this point I considered the mini ready, so it was time to finish up the base. I grabbed a dark brown mix from the palette and painted it on the ground textures. Then I painted the plating with lead bircher and the debris with Balthazar gold. The metal parts were dry brushed with storm horse silver and the ground also received a heavy dry brush with rock art flash. This may seem heavy handed at first, but in the next step we'll dull it down. I've randomly applied non oil and agrax overshade on the base, creating a blend of color that would tie the base together. While the washes were drying, I painted the rims with Abaddon black. After this step, I assembled the mini with super glue, attached it to the base, and claimed the victory. So, this is the finished Breacher Boy from the Orc Commando set. I think he fits well with the rest of his unit. The remaining models will be painted with a similar but slightly different color scheme in the upcoming videos. Thank you for sticking around until the end. If you have any further questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching and goodbye.